All right, nice little brim there. First fish of the day, guys. Two casts. Not bad. We're actually got some uh, catfish bait thawing out in the live well right here. We're going to add him in there. He might be catfish bait or he might be food. I don't know. We'll see. I'm looking for shell cracker beds. But I'll take that brim any day. It's great catfish bait. I plan on catfishing later as well. And it's good table fare. You know, just seeing what's down there. Got a red worm hook. Uh, gold number two hook. Bobber. Sinker. I don't know. Brim buster. Telescoping cane pole, basically. Let's try over here. Basically, how I'm going to find a shell cracker bed. Or try to find one. Is I'm just going to fish the bank. Just kind of troll along here. And not spend too much time in the area. And just flip on through. And... Um, you know, might catch a few stragglers here and there, different species, but when you get on a bed, you know, you'll smell it, you'll see bubbles, you'll see plumes of dirt being thrown up by the fish, and uh, if it's shallow enough, you'll even see the little indentations they make into the bottom where they're scooping out the dirt to lay the eggs. Got the trolling motor going nice and slow. It's kind of like my favorite place to fish. Got something biting there. There he is. Oh. Alright. That's a nice little shell cracker. That's a female. So we're going to throw her back. We're not required to throw her back. But it uh, looks like she's got some eggs there. We're going to throw her back so she can spawn and breed them out. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I found a, <laughs> found a killer first. Come on, go. Go. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's the uh, that's the female shellcracker. You can tell because they're more yellowish and green. You probably call shellcracker red-eared sunfish. That's the real name for them. You can literally see the shellcracker down there. He don't want the worm there, but he don't want to touch it. Oh man, there's some big ones. There's some big shellcracker right there. I don't know if you can see them. There's a little pocket right there. I hate that I'm so close to it. Come on, take it down, take it down. There he is. And the little bait fish there. That's perfect. Perfect little brim. See if we can't find a few more. That way I have three different kinds of bait for catfish. Oop, there's another one. Oh, he fell off. Ooh, that's a better one. Ooh, stump knocker. Check that out, guys. It's a spotted sunfish. Better known as a stump knocker down here, South Carolina. Awesome catfish bait. The powerhouse is pushing water. So I think uh, that's got the tides messed up. You know, the tide can't go out because they keep pumping water. So it's messing the fish up. I see big shell cracker up there in the shallow just sitting there. That right there is a big stump knocker, guys. That's about as big as they get. Again, I think other people call them spotted sunfish. That's like the perfect catfish bait right there. Perfect. Whew, I popped off my uh, <laughs> my brim buster, so I started using this little PC Fun uh, Blade SC on this Zebco rod, <laughs> and they're a lot more enjoyable to catch. All right, this is a female. You can tell because she's really bright yellow and green. She doesn't have any eggs, but we're gonna go ahead and let her go because she's a female. Good looking fish. Boom. All right, we got a decent fish on, guys. All right, nice one. Look at that shell cracker. Woo! That's a big one. Oh, man. Look at that one. Woo! Man, that one right there is a butte, Clark. Look at that. Beautiful fish. I think that's a male. Yeah, it looks like it. Come out in the sun. Yeah, big dark, dark green. I'm gonna keep that one. That's a good looking fish right there. Been looking for him all day. This video is sponsored in part by Dr. Pepper. Uh, no, that, that's a joke. 
bad joke. Don't sue me. But uh, the iodine and pepper, if you would like this monster cavy, just give me a call. <sighs> Let's go catfishing. Okay, guys, we're catfishing. Let's go catfishing. I've chosen a section of the river that's a no wake zone, unfortunately. <laughs> Some people don't know what that means. So uh, they're kind of coming here kind of fast, but we've got some uh, rose shad here or American shad and one of those little stump knockers we just cut up. And we're gonna get these baits out here, see if we can't catch us a big fish. This is a big heavy rod. Still never caught anything off of this big headpiece right here. Doesn't mean I'm gonna give up. There we go, guys. Big old bait. Mm. All right, we're gonna chunk this out here. Back cast it a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. Get that heavy weight on it. Hopefully it'll stay out there in the channel. Okay, guys, we're gonna put a live sunfish on this demon dragon right here. So the hill rattle that down there and hopefully attract some fish. All right, we got that bait on there. I'm gonna continue to get these rods out and uh, we'll be back. Well guys, we are just not having any luck with the catfish here. And uh, upriver is a bunch of boat traffic. So I think we're gonna make a journey since we're on a, uh, you know, having a pontoon adventure today. We're gonna go way down river or maybe there isn't as much boat traffic. And it's a nice little ride too. So uh, you'll get to see some scenery on the way. Yep, I'm gonna crank up now. Well, actually I gotta reel up all these rods. <laughs> Hey guys, it was a good long ride, but we made it all the way down to the Mary Claire, which is this tugboat right here. Anna and I caught a nice one up under there, and I caught a few others, so we're gonna try this spot out. See if we can catch this catfish. What would an adventure be without a good old backlash? Oh man, I felt it slip from under my thumb, and I knew it was, I knew I was over. Take down on this outside rod. Woo! Guys, we've been waiting all day for a fish, for a catfish anyway. Feels like. All right. I don't think he's very big, but he, he took the rod down like he was huge. Well, that's what I love about these river catfishes. They all fight hard. They all hit hard, no matter. It's coming up, coming up, coming up. Let's see what he is. Coming up, little fella. Nice blue cat. All right. He hit on the peg float and the rattles. All right. I think we can. Bill dance this guy, as Steve Douglas would say. <laughs> we don't need the net. He's hooked very well in the corner of the mouth. But I gotta be careful not to wrap my hand up in this line. I'm just gonna reach down for the leader, lift him up. Here we go, guys. First catfish of the day. Yes! Very happy about that. Okay, let's get him unhooked here. Ooh, he's gonna go flipping around. The hook got him right where it matters too, boy. Now this is a good eating sized catfish, but I think for my lunch slash dinner, I'm gonna have some uh, shell cracker and brim. Now, this one's a little large just for me. You know, if it were me and Anna, this would be good nuggets for both of us. Last time I cooked just one like this for me, it was too much food. 
So uh, we're gonna let him go, let him grow up, and we'll see him not too far from now, hopefully. Woo! He flipped on me. <laughs> see you later. The catfish gunk is off, guys. Okie dokie, we've sat in this spot way too long for this one fish. Let's go. Reel it up. We're gonna go over here to those barges and try them out. Looks like somebody's already over there. Yeah, guys, this is kind of crazy. We got 10 trillion seagulls over here. And we kind of got this little nook here that we can fish in. I'm gonna spot lock us about right here. And we're gonna try this out. Unique situation here. But maybe this barge will block some of the wind coming from off of that grass over there. Oh, we got a big takedown right here, guys. Woo-wee! And that was a big takedown. Something was hitting the rod right next to it, but uh didn't didn't take the bait i'm sitting there trying to reel up and get this next rod out and this one's a slam down hmm what a good takedown got some big waves coming in trying not to get knocked over i don't think there's anything that can get knocked over but uh got a big boat come by Hey, he's back there on top of the water. Yeah, this place is notorious for big giant takedowns from average size fish because you have this uh, massive current here. But that just makes it more exciting for me, I think. Now that I think I, I know. <laughs> here he comes, he's bigger than the first one. Male cat. Oh, what do you know? He hit on the same rig the first one did. Yeah, he's... Yeah, he's a good bit bigger than the first one. Hit on the brim head. That's good to know. Might have to get the net out for this. I'm gonna try to build Anson. I'm gonna try to build Anson so I don't have to get the net out. Probably would be smart for me to get the net out <laughs> sometime soon in case I get a nice one on, but it's right here in the back of the boat. All right, I'm leaving a little extra slack there in case I drop him and he takes off. He won't take the uh, rod out of the boat. Ugh. Twisting and a turning. Yeah, he's a, he's a good bit bigger than that first one. That one will probably go 10 or 12 pounds. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and get this out because this, this is a piece of brim. This is actually a brim head as well, so same exact thing that fish hit on. I'm gonna get it out. <clears throat> that way we can have some more fun takedown. There he is, guys. Another good looking blue cat. Right, let's get him back in the water here. See you later, pal. All right, when's the next one coming? Come on, come on, come on. It's the only bad thing about fishing this river sometimes is all the grass you gotta deal with. What this is, guys. Wow, that's a cool thing to add to the adventure. There's one back here. Look at him. Whoa. They're all over the place. Wow. How close they're gonna get. Alright, guys, we're gonna go into this little creek here. Looks like the wind is being blocked a little bit, so we can cook us some fish. I think we're gonna be good. Four foot. I wanna say I've been in this creek before, but uh, you know, it kind of looks like all these creeks off of the main channel. Uh, shallow and very grassy. It keeps going from two feet to eight feet to five feet. There's lots of depth changes in here. Okay, I have confirmed this is not the creek 
I have been in before. Um, so we might go try to find a different one because it's getting really shallow. I mean, it's a nice little creek nonetheless. Cool to explore. Little creeks I've never been to. If it wasn't a tidal creek, it'd be a good one to camp in, but you could wake up with no water under you. <laughs> and you don't want that. Yes, this is the creek I was after. Yeah, this looks much, much bigger and uh, much more like what I remember. We'll drive it back until we get a good wind block from the trees so we can uh, cook. No, well, guys, we've come as far as we can go. Looks like a railroad bridge, maybe? It's just like a path, like a go golf cart path. Yeah, it's a golf cart path. That's very interesting. I wonder where that goes to. <laughs> I guess on another day we can come back here with the boat, anchor it up, jump on there, and follow that where it goes on the next adventure. Not for this adventure, though. It'd be silly of me not to throw a rod out. We have a convergence of three creeks back here. So uh, while we're doing all that, we're gonna fish. There's a deep hole right there when I came back through from that golf cart path right here where those three connect. I'm gonna throw back in there. I'm just gonna put out three rods. Hopefully we got enough current to keep them there. I already had bait on these three rods and that way I'm not using any more. As you can tell, I've already dispatched of my uh, shell cracker and my bluegill there. Just gonna scale them up. I'm gonna get the top of that tail too. And oh yeah, see that skit? That spoon just sucks up all those scales right there. And you just dump them out with your thumb. Make sure you get all them scales off because we're gonna cook it with the skin on. And you, you don't want to bite down on the scale. Now, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's better than a bone, but still not pleasant. Now, here's the big, big daddy shell cracker. See, these are harder. To, those are a little harder to scale. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll finish severing the head here. Good catfish bait, man. I should, man, is that a big juicy bait or what? Woo. Ugh. Oh yeah. All right, but next, I'm gonna take that knife. It's gonna go through the anal vent right there. Just use our thumb to dump all those yummy guts out. You also want to um, express the heart right there. Just take your thumb all the way back to the heart. Just use your thumbnail to follow up the spine. Make sure we get that blood out of there. All right, there's the small one. Here's the big one. Cut through that vent hole like that. Then you just want to run them under water and clean them up real good. Make sure you get everything off of there. Just these little membranes and stuff. It's not going to kill you. But they're a little slimy. Depends on who's eating them. All right, we're just going to wash it off here. Put them in the net there. Clean them off with a little creek water. I'm just going to leave them in the net right there. Until I'm ready to cook them. All right, then we can just close that up. Okay, we're gonna get this thing started here. I ran out of cooking gas. We have to leave. I'll cook them at the house. Oh man, I messed that up, didn't I? See you at the house, guys. Okay guys, we're back at the house. Uh, I went camping in Tennessee a couple weeks ago, as you saw if you watched the channel, and I thought I had enough butane in there, but I guess not. So we packed everything up, I raced home, put, all the, put the boat up and everything, and now we're here in the kitchen cooking. So this was exactly what I was gonna do on the boat. I had this mix pre-made, 
There's our uh, shell cracker and our bluegill. And all I'm going to do is dredge those uh, fish in this meal here. And then I'm going to use my wok to fry them. And uh, I'm not going to fill the whole thing up or anything. These aren't going to be deep fried fish. They're going to be uh, basically like chicken fried where they're not totally immersed in oil. But I'll show you that in a minute. We got some vegetable oil here from Walmart. We're just gonna pour that in and get cranking. All right, pouring that in there. Again, we're not gonna totally cover the fish. That should be enough right there. Kind of like chicken fried instead of deep fried. Okay, the fish are drying off. Look good. Um, I didn't clean them in the sink because this is kind of how they would be out in the water. Okay, the fish are going in the dredge. I'm just gonna zip this bag up and shake them up. Gonna shake them up real good. Make sure that fish fry gets in all those little crevices. I also gotta make sure that the fish don't poke a hole in the bag because that would be a mess. Oh yeah, that looks good. nice and coated okay we're gonna see if our oil is ready yep it's starting to fry up pretty good uh, it doesn't take very long for this oil to heat up because we didn't fill the whole thing up uh, I think I'm gonna give it a few more seconds to really get good and hot before I throw them in okay before we commit all the way a good pro tip my wife just taught me she kind of, oh yeah, it's good and hot. Stick the tail in there. All right, there's one. And there's two. I'm giving pro tips. Mm-hmm. Pro. So this mix is made up of a bunch of different things. It's got your favorite fish fry in there. Uh, it's also got some Old Bay, adobo, pepper, garlic, salt. Uh, any any kind of spice you want to throw in there. These are going to be kind of spicy because uh, I just I just like them really spicy. All right, they don't have to cook long on each side. Just a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over. looking good uh, some of the batter came off of there and that's because I didn't quite get the oil hot enough so uh, you know get your oil really really hot before you put it in there you know this is supposed to be a catch and cook something you can do out there on the boat and uh, you know it's not always gonna be perfect out on the boat either so it's still gonna taste awesome a little bit of salt on there Oh yeah, it's looking really good. Mmm, <laughs> they're falling apart. The shell cracker is kind of thick. All right, that shell cracker is a thick boy. So it's taking a little longer to cook. What I could have done was cut it in half uh, in between the front and the tail and cook two halves or I could have put three strikes in the side to help it cook a little better but I think we're just about done we're going to take them out mmm Anna says it smells good oh yeah that's good and hard fried like I like it mmm I'm going to flip this sucker over one more time yeah I'm going to let that other side of that shell cracker get hard fried like this side I really like that alright guys we're going to take it out oh yeah Kind of like chicken fried i really like that got a nice tail there too you can eat there you go guys mmm how you like that tail as a tater chip tail mm. yes, <laughs> you can't have any olive of said Pluh. give me some all right well, let's taste the actual fish okay the steam coming off that thing yummy she sees all over my foot. All over my foot too. Gross. Mmm. 
this piece I have is really good. It's my turn. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, nice. Man, that would have been really good out of the water, guys. Yeah. Sorry for the mishap. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Until next time, happy fishing.